My name is Shane Bertel, and I'm here today to talk to you guys, actually to show you guys that your parents were not lying to you when they said to eat your vegetables. <laughs> I didn't take them seriously, and now look at me. It's obviously a joke. Um, I'm here to talk about my. I'm here to talk about my blog. My crazy adventure with blogging started out of fear. And I don't often talk about that fact because it's not fun or easy, but it's the truth. In all the places that I've been interviewed over the last few years, writers have always quoted that I began the blog to simply make people laugh. And at the heart of it, that's completely true. I did do that. But my intense fear of being forgotten was what led me to press post for the very first time. I was born with a rare disease called spinal muscular atrophy, which basically just means that I wasn't very good at hopscotch when I was a kid. Um, fun fact, it also makes talking for long periods of time uh, difficult for me, so naturally I became a public speaker. <laughs> um, so if I started to like drool or pass out or fall off the stage, um, call an ambulance. <laughs> if I've learned one thing uh, during my life, it's that having a sense of humor can be a very powerful way to cope with adversity. And that's the message that I want you guys to take from me today. Laughter is amazing and it's useful. So I pressed post for the first time uh, about three years ago on my very first post, which I titled, This is Probably a Terrible Idea. In that post, I explained everything about my disability to the stranger who I imagined would be reading it. I explained that my muscles get weaker as I get older. I explained that I need help with everything from pooping to eating to having a drink of water, which I will do right now. <laughs> Perfect. I explain that I'm afraid of dying, but not so afraid that I use any of the medical equipment that I'm supposed to use to help me sleep at night. <coughs> Excuse me. I explained all this, and then I hit send. I got to close my laptop. I really gave it, you know, no second thought. I need to just pull up a little bit. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This is real difficult. <laughs> Two fingers on the keypad and move them up. Which one? The keypad. The mouse. <laughs> oh, God. Now put the mouse on. <laughs> it's going to be 5 o'clock before we're done. <laughs> Just click at the bottom. Put, well, not there. Up. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. This is my life. Put it right there. There you go. Magic. <laughs> Round of applause. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> You're fired. <by> that. <laughs> so I pressed post and I thought, no one's going to read this shit. And I was wrong. <laughs> A couple of days later, I checked my blog uh, just to see what had happened, maybe. Um, and there were a few dozen likes on that first post. There were also a few messages in my inbox telling me to write more. And I didn't know what to make of that, so I just listened to them and I wrote more. The next few months are a complete, complete blur. As I wrote more stories about my life, my followers started to climb into the hundreds and then the thousands and then the hundreds of thousands. 
suddenly Bellagio had become one of the most important parts of my life. People from all over the world were writing me, Australia, Hong Kong, Brazil, Canada, telling me that my stories were inspiring them and helping them look at life in a more positive way. Now, I was 19 at that time and had no idea how to handle this. Um, my responses were probably something like, uh, I, I love you, um, thank you, I love you. Uh, are you sure you mean my blog? I love you, I love you. Um, I just didn't know what else to say. But I discovered something about myself over those first few months. I really enjoyed writing, and I really enjoyed making people feel something with my writing. So I kept going. Later that year, I had another crazy idea. Why not take the basic message of my blog and turn it into a nonprofit organization that would help people learn that laughter is powerful. And my mom chimed in, well, because you're in college and starting a nonprofit isn't something that you just do on a whim. Um, also, Shane, you're in college. Please focus on college. <laughs> I ignored that advice. <laughs> um, about a week later, my cousin and I were sitting in a lawyer's office telling him about our idea to start this nonprofit. And to our surprise, he was nodding his head and you know, he really thought we had an idea here. And I don't think that was because we were paying him. <laughs> but it could be. Uh, a few years later, Laughing at My Nightmare Inc. was born. We had absolutely no idea what we were doing, but that didn't matter because we found people who did know what they were doing and we asked them to help us. So we built up this team of people who cared about helping others and it really blew my mind to see what we were able to create. All right, you're up again. <laughs> no, no, again. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a sip of water here. Pardon me. So, we decided that in addition to teaching people about humor and laughter, that we were also going to raise money for muscular dystrophy research, which is obviously a cause that's uh, pretty close to home. And I'm proud to say that in that first um, two years that we ran that campaign, we raised over $17,000 for that cause. The nonprofit has given me a career. My mom started out telling me to focus on school, to get good grades so I had my job. And I was lucky enough that all of this came together in such a way that on my, on my last day of college, this past summer, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I wanted to work at my nonprofit and change lives for as long as I can. The other thing that I wanted to do after graduating was write more books. So let's rewind a little bit more. <laughs> In the process of studying my nonprofit, going through another year of school, uh, writing a lot more on my blog, seeing my followers climb into the thousands, you know, 300,000, 400,000, half a million, uh, people started saying to me, you should write a book. And my response was, 
<laughs> uh, no, I can't do that. Um, and then in my junior year of college, I was talking to one of my professors, telling her everything that was going on. And I told her about this idea to write a book. I was stressed that I was you know, hesitant and didn't know if I could do it. And she looked at me like I was stupid and said, you can absolutely do it and I'll help you. So that next semester, we set up an independent study class where she taught me how to write a book proposal that I would then use to find a literary agent and a publisher. Um, in similar fashion to how the last few years have been going, um, in that semester alone, I found a literary agent from New York City who was in love with my idea. And a few weeks later, she sold the rights of my memoir to Macmillan Publishing. When I got that phone call, I was an email. Um, that was a phone call. Uh, telling me that they had sold my book and telling me that number of how much it sold for. Um, I kind of lost it. Uh, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. And I also took that number and said, hey mom, guess what? <laughs> guess what all my goofing around has done? Um, so, over the next year, I wrote a book. And it was scary and difficult and, you know, it was exactly what I thought it would be. But I had a lot of help along the way. My editor at Macmillan is the coolest, most talented person that I've ever met. Uh, she challenged me every step of the way to give everything that I had to the book. All right, one more time, Dad. Now the scroll. So that's where I'm at right now. My book comes out in three days, October 14th. Um, so you guys are actually seeing me at a fairly important and scary and amazing moment in my life right now. I can say that I'm happier than I've ever been, I'm more excited than I've ever been, and absolutely none of this would have happened if I hadn't pressed post for that first time. So, to wrap up, I want all of you to look at your own lives right now. I want you to think about how you approach the adversity that you face, because we all face it. Do you allow your problems to bring you down and upset you and make you sad for long periods of time? That's normal. That's a natural human response and that's fine. But we have a choice about how adversity impacts us in the long run. You can choose to look for the humor in nasty situations. You can choose to focus on the positive solutions rather than dwelling on negative circumstances. I challenge all of you to begin thinking about adversity in this new way. And it honestly might feel fake at first. You know, if you're on your way to work and your tire blows and you don't have a spare and you know you're going to be late and that you're about to get in just a fuck ton of trouble, excuse me, um, laughing will not feel like the appropriate response in that moment. But I promise you that over time, if you consistently urge yourself to focus on the positive, for example, you have a car and you have a job, it will start to become your natural way of thinking. And life is so much more beautiful when you're able to take a step back and realize that our problems are what we make of them. 
using shoes to let them ruin us and bring us down, or we can overcome them in a positive way. Thank you. If you guys have questions, I am an open book. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you have any, um, I will say that you probably saw me, but I got special permission from my publisher to sell my books at this event. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to attempt to get back down my elevator, and I'll be out there um, autographing books if you want to buy one. Um, if anyone has questions, you can ask now, or we can talk at the table. So, anyone? No? All right, awesome. Thank you guys, this was awesome.